Good morning, church. My name is Kendall. This morning's scripture comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around, around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when, he, when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kendall. That was, uh, of course, the nativity. We, we know um, Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 20. So my name is Justin, and uh, I'm the student pastor here at our Poto campus. And so it's such a pleasure and honor uh, to be in front of you uh, sharing God's word this morning. Um, so we are... I did my math earlier. I believe we're six days until Christmas, okay? And so uh, you guys in here, you've got, and I've still got something to buy, so you've got about <clears throat> five and a half days to get it done, right? Um, not counting the day, so this is extra today, and so, you know, we have our Christmas Eve service, six o'clock here, don't miss that, and so you probably need to get it done before that, plus stuff's closing, so uh, if you're like me, you're a little you know, you just kind of, you're thinking about it still, you know, you got stuff to buy, and, and uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm almost there, so you guys keep that in mind, so Merry Christmas, right, this is, this is, this is the time of year we celebrate Christmas, uh, like I said, six days from now, uh, on Saturday, Christmas morning, uh, you know, Kendall just read to us the, the, the nativity, you know, the, the birth of Jesus, Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 20, and just a few things I want to talk about in this scripture, and we're going to move to, to something else. I, you know, there's always probably three things in here that's really always stood out to me. And, and number one, we know that um, the, the Christ, the, this baby, this newborn baby, Jesus, was, was laid, in a, laid in a manger in swaddling clothes, right? And so we know that a manger is a feed trough, right? And we know that... that it, what I've read about it, it was probably chiseled out of stone of some sort. Could have been wood. You know, we have woodwinds here in our yard and all that because it would be too heavy to keep a stone one around and too hard to build. But so maybe chiseled out of stone. But we know that a, a, a feed trough is usually there to feed animals, right? And so there's no room at the end. You guys know the story. We just got it read to us. And, and so there was no room, whether that was with Joseph's extended family because the reason why they were there, uh, there excuse me, or, or what, what the case may be, but we know that, that he was born either with livestock around him or a place where livestock had once been kept, right? And, and you know, if you 
most of us have a rural background or know that places that livestock's kept not necessarily smells good, right? Uh, we know that what happens when livestock's there and uh, what they're doing besides eating, they're doing something else and sleeping, right? And so, man, uh, it's always blown my mind that, that the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings was born in this situation. What in a palace was it? What in a palace? And so that's something that's always stood out to me. Also, and, and, I, and I've done this every time I've read it for the most part, and Kendall just read it, I've watched you guys, and, and no one went, right? And so look at this part in the story. After the angels come to the uh, shepherds and let them know what to go look for and how, what, what good news, they don't fear, this is what we're telling you about. It says this, it says, suddenly there was an angel, there with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. You think about that for a minute. Suddenly, I mean, there's, there's an angel there, and suddenly, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. You know, there's some moments in time I, I like to go back and be there, you know, be, a, be a fly, you know, be some there and watch that, and I'm like, golly, I've read over that. And you're just like, yeah, and suddenly there's a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. And you go, wow, what did that look like? I'm, what is a multitude of heavenly hosts? Man, I bet that was awesome. I bet Hollywood cannot even get close to, you know, showing what that looked like. You know, that's like a wow moment. Like, whoa. And so, and lastly, and to the point here, um, I've always, I don't know if I know what, the, what this is or not, but at the very end, you know, Mary is there with the baby in a manger, and probably, I don't know, maybe she's like, ooh, this is not what I really expected, right? This is not how I thought. I'm a, I'm a guy that thinks ahead, and, and I, sometimes I get disappointed in moments, so like, you know, I get my family, I'll get stuff in my head all geared up how it should be and it's not like that so I have to deal with that and I'm sure she's like I did not expect this when I this is not how I expected this birth to go down but it did but I'm sure when the shepherds came and told her what they had seen that gave her some relief and it says but married when they said told them but Mary treasured up all these things and pondering them in her heart pondering that's always stood out to me pondering them in her heart so Today, we're talking about this birth of Jesus, this birth of, of, of the Messiah over 2,000 years later. And I thought, you know, there was probably more than one baby born that night, if not Bethlehem, maybe the region, that we are still thinking about, talking about. I mean, listen, we were here last Sunday because of this birth. We're coming here Saturday, um, Friday night for the Christmas Eve several. We'll be here two days later, Sunday. We're here on Wednesday nights. We, we meet in youth and kids and because of this birth. We talk about this birth uh, every Sunday all year long in Poto, Oklahoma. We talk about this birth, some of us daily are in God's word, man, because of the birth of Jesus, right? So why was it so important? And I'm going to tell you, God has led me to a text I'm going to share with you. Um, and you can turn your Bibles to Titus chapter 3. We're going to be in Titus chapter 3. This morning, if you want to turn there, I think it'll be on the screen as well. And I want to say, uh, just really, the Lord has led me to this, and I'm, I'm excited to share with you this morning what he's laid on my heart. Um, and so we're just going to jump right into it. Titus chapter 3, we're going to start in verse 3. So this is a letter from Paul to his protege, Titus, who's kind of on a mission in Crete, and, and he's going to lay out some things here in, 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 in chapter 3. Started in verse 3. Here we go. We'll jump right into it. This is Paul. Paul says, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others, and hating one another. Okay? And Merry Christmas, right? So, it, 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 one more time, clear, clear language from Paul. He reminds us, this is for a, before, if you're a Christian in here, it's before you met the Lord, right? Okay? If you're not, then maybe, you know, we're still there, right? For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days of malice and envy, hated by others, and hating one another. And so I'm a definitions guy, uh, you know, even though we, I know what they mean, but, you know, I just love reading some definitions to make sure I kind of know and what does officially mean. So here's some definitions. Foolish, right? Ignorant to everything to do with God, okay? Foolish. Disobedient. 
rebellious towards any authority instituted by God, led astray, continuing, continually led deeper and deeper into sin by the enemy, by Satan. Let, it'll take you further than you ever want to go, right? Slaves to various passions and pleasures, a slave to our fleshly appetites and passions. I mean, you guys know, I mean, we can be a slave to sin, no doubt. Living in malice, giving over to a lifestyle of evil, envy, never satisfied with what we have, but always wanting and grasping for more. Hating others, this is basically a natural fruit from all the above I just read, right? Um, this kind of life makes us mean-spirited, hard to get along with, and hating one another, walking without love for our fellow man. Paul says, Christians, that was you. That was once you. You were that bad, right? That's where you were. And I'll tell you, if, this was, if that was the only verse there, like, we wouldn't be here this morning. We would not be singing Christmas carols. We would not be... Um, excited about the birth of Jesus, lying in the manger and all that, and have nativity scenes in our yard and, and be here right now if that was it. Because it would be a sad, sad world. And there's a lot of folks hanging out there. And that breaks my heart, right? But, um, and you know, and, and, and here's the deal. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the start of the Romans road, says, we've all sinned. We've all fought, fallen short of God's glory. So we're not in here, you know, saying, well, you know, golly, I'm not as bad as them or them. I'm, we don't, sin is sin, guys. Sin is sin. The Bible's clear about that. One sin, if you're in here and you've had one sin, yeah, you know, you've had more than one. You're, you're already lying about that. So we, we, we're all on an equal field there. We're all sinners. We start at the same spot. But let's move on to Titus chapter 3, verse 4. We'll throw verse 4 and 5. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. Not because of the works done by me and you in righteousness, right? No. But according to his own mercy, by the washing and regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. I love reading these things twice. Bear with me. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. Not because of the works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. But God is good, right? But God is good. Look what happened in verse 4. But when the goodness and loving kindness of our Savior appeared. Okay? So do you see the contrast there from verse 3 to verse 4? Okay? But people hate each other. They're evil. They're harsh and mean. But in verse 4, God's kind and saving and loving. And it all began with the birth of Jesus. That's when it all started, okay? Um, uh, verse four again, but, I'm sorry, verse three, but uh, we're foolish and deceiving, lustful, envious, hateful, but in verse three, God has changed all of that through the coming of his son in verse four, okay? And so, now verse four says God is our savior. Literally, I think better translated, our savior who is God. Jesus Christ is the only Savior. You know, you can know God this Christmas season in many capacities. You know, Father, um, Creator, Judge, Jesus in a manger. But we better know Him as Savior. We better know Him as Savior. Uh, you best know Him as a Savior who moved into your life to transform you from what you were, a condemned sinner, to what you are now, a new person in Christ. New person in Christ, born again. So God rescued us. He saved us. He purchased our salvation. Listen, we were helpless in verse 3. We're rescued in verse 4. Okay? We were sick in verse 3. We're made well in verse 4. We had a terminal disease in verse 3. We're cured in verse 4. We were in bondage in verse 3. And we're free in verse 4. And that's the good news. And it's the good news because God is the one who accomplished it for us. We did not. We cannot. We could not. So Christianity is uh, set apart from other world religions. You guys know this. It doesn't rely on human works and, and deeds and good, good stuff that we can do to get in to heaven. Um, God lovingly reached down to earth, provided a way for us 
to heaven, and, and not just heaven, but a better life today on earth. And it's good news because God accomplished it, because we can't. We can't. And so, you know, I, I, why? I ask this question, why? What prompted God to save you and me? Why did he do it? Was it because you deserved it or I deserved it? We both know that answer is no, right? Uh, you didn't earn it. We know that. We, you know, I, we can't earn it. We can't be good enough. Is it because you started coming here to Cross Community Church or to a different church? Or, you know, it wasn't because your parents were Christians. And even wasn't because you walked an aisle or said a prayer. It was because of his kindness and love. Verse 4 tells us he had mercy on us. He had mercy on us. And guys, we've been brainwashed into thinking that anything's going to happen in your life. You know, I mean, it kind of comes from us. You know, it, it's, uh, we can do it. We can pull ourselves up. You know, we've been brainwashed that, but you can't miss this. You can't save yourself. Don't miss this one. You can't save yourself. You can't save yourself. Um, you'll never be good enough. We've got to rely on Jesus and Jesus alone. So this is, the, this is the gospel we're talking about, right? This is the good news. I love our church. We, we talk about it every Sunday. It's so important. Um, I really, really believe this, and I have no whatsoever data to back this up, that this is Justin believing that we are so gospel illiterate today in our country, uh, in Poto. Um, you know, our nation's 245 years old. I was born in 1976, so I always know exactly how old our nation is. Uh, and I really believe that, just, just by watching... TV, seeing videos and hearing people that just, just I really believe we're really gospel illiterate. And I, I don't, there's reasons why. But so many people, so many people are out there trying to have the good outweigh their bad. And there's a lot of maybe in here, that, you this morning, and that's the way you think. My good God, I got to do good. I got to please. I got to do good. I got to do good. Look at verse 6 and 7 in Titus chapter 3. This Holy Spirit is talking about whom he poured out on us richly, and this is what we talked about earlier, through who? Jesus Christ, our Savior. So that being justified by His grace, by Jesus' grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Okay? He poured out on us richly in Christ. Not in your goodness, because you're good and because you did this or that. No, it was Jesus and only Jesus. Why is the birth of Christ so important? Salvation comes through Christ alone and only Christ alone. The world wants to tell you something different today, church, and it's a lie from the pit of hell. Only through Christ alone. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So that makes Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 7, that makes it the Christmas story, right? It's a story of forgiveness, it's a story of unexplainable, unimaginable love. It's a love we can't comprehend as humans. I cannot wrap my mind around it. I can't figure it out. Um, you know, we are conditional lovers in here as humans. Whether you want to believe it or not, you know, you love your spouse and your kids with all your heart. Yeah, they disappoint you. You get frustrated with them. You want to, you know, oh, they, my kids sometimes, I just want to wring your neck, right? They, did y'all's kids frustrate you a little bit or am I the only one in here? Amen. And so, but my wife never, right, never. We, we never have a fight and we always get along. But, uh, but seriously, I mean, they disappoint us. People disappoint us and, and you love them, sure. But man, you're just like, oh, I don't like them right now. And just, there's moments you're just like, uh, maybe I'm just admitting major sin right now in my life, right? But there's moments you're just like, oh, Lee, I'd like to just, mm, come on, right? Man, do you realize that don't happen with us as believers? Turn it with, to Romans chapter 8 real quick with me. And I, I, dare, dare I say, this is my favorite um, scripture. I, I've got several. This is Paul writing to the church at Rome. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 through 39. I think it's going to be on the screen. I'm reading, this is the New Living Translation. This part is. I, I love this. I love it out of every translation, but this is, this is my favorite. Paul says, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Okay? Powerful, right? Now he's going to talk about nothing. Here we go. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, 
neither fears for today nor his worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or the earth below. Indeed, and here we go. Nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed to us in who? Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Oh, Lee. So when, when you're his, you're his. He's not letting go. When you're truly his and you truly gave your life to Christ and chose to follow him, he ain't letting go. When God, listen, listen, I, I tell this to the students a lot, and it's so true. When God looks on you today, okay, and, and if you're born again Christian and you know who you are in here, he looks on you today, you know what he sees? He sees perfection. And you say, well, Justin, whew, mm -mm, no, I've had a rough week, I've had a rough month, I've had a rough year, whew, you know, yeah, you don't know. You don't know my thoughts. I hadn't read my Bible in two weeks. I hardly prayed. I've just been busy with work and finishing that blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Well, that's hogwash. If you're in Christ, right, when he, when he sees you today, he sees perfection. Why does he see perfection? Because you're perfect? No. Because you're covered with the blood of Jesus, and that makes you white as snow. Right? Mm. That's why Christmas is worth celebrating. My wife gave me this quote here several weeks back, and it stuck with me, and this really is good for this moment. It says, he didn't just take away our sins. He gave us his righteousness. Right? He didn't just take away our sins. He gave us his righteousness. Whew. That gets me excited. I know this time of year, <clears throat> excuse me, can be uh, rough on some families. I mean, I, my, my dad, I lost my dad uh, in the summer of 16. And I still, to this day, um, daily, right? You guys know you've lost loved ones. Everybody here has. Uh, daily, it can be something that you deal with a little bit. But, you know, from that span from, from uh, Thanksgiving to Christmas for us, that you know, you, you, you can be downtrodden. I can be kind of downtrodden if I let myself sometimes. And I, there may be, maybe you just lost someone recently uh, and it's really raw and fresh to you. Uh, health problems, someone's sick. I mean, what you guys know what I'm talking about. This time of year can bring that stuff up for sure. But when I think about Titus chapter 3 and Romans chapter 8, sorry, I never got emotional <clears throat> early doing this, but uh, practicing this, but, but uh, man... That gives me joy, right? Gives me joy. Um, we're not going to have joy in our circumstances very often. Sometimes we get a little bit here and there. But this kind of stuff gives me joy. I have a hard time figuring out how folks get through um, life without Christ, right? So, excuse me, in closing, in closing, if our band wants to come up here and, 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 and get ready to, to sing us a song, there's about three ways I figured out you could respond to this. You've got probably something that I, you know, however God leads you to respond today. Um, if, you're not, if, you, if you're here today and you've not been born again, man, uh, you don't have a relationship with Christ. There's just two simple actions to take, okay? You, you, you admit you're a sinner, and you rely on Christ. Call out to him. You can do it right now where you're sitting right now while I'm talking. You know, give your life to Jesus. Give your life over. You know, I'm a sinner and I need a savior, right? I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, and if you do that, I don't need to tell you to come up here after the service or during, I mean, you'll come. You'll come. You'll come. And so if you need prayer, well, I'll be up here, Jason will be up here. We have deacons and elders everywhere. You've got friends and family out there. Anybody hardly in this, almost in this church can, can pray with you and talk with you. Maybe you need to make uh, Christ the center of your family gatherings or back to the center of your life more, you know? Uh, man, make sure we keep this season in perspective, right? Uh, read what Kendall read to us Christmas morning, Christmas Eve night. Uh, read Titus chapter 3, 3 through 7. You know, you can find almost the same exact words from Paul in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 or 8. 
It's right there. The gospel's laid out for us. So make Christ center your family together. Let me say this to you, too. This is lastly, another way you can respond. This is the most perfect time of year, church, to share the gospel with friends and family. You know, Easter is, um, not everybody celebrates Easter. We have a good spike in attendance, right, and all that, but not everybody celebrates Easter. Everybody's opening gifts. There are some families that already had three or four Christmases, all right, this month that they've done. So everybody, they may not know Jesus from anybody else and, and may not give a rip about him, but they're going to open presents and buy presents and have the tree. You know, it's a perfect opportunity. There's no excuse for us not to share the gospel with our people that we love, people that we care about. So I challenge you today, share this. This, this is a life or death situation right here. Share the gospel. Um, and, I, and just pray the Lord will give you that strength to do that. So I'm, I'm going to pray for us, and I'm going to say amen. They're going to play an awesome song. And, and you guys respond however you need to respond. You stand up. You sit down. You come up here and pray. You pray where you're at. You do whatever you feel led to do this morning. But I'm going to just challenge you to, to, to just respond to God's word this morning. Uh, nothing that I said, but to God's word and the truth of it. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you so much for Jesus. Overwhelming, Lord, to, to uh, think about how much you love us. Lord, the cross on Calvary and the resurrection, we serve a living God. And that's why we're here as well. And so we're so thankful for that. I pray if anybody here doesn't know you, oh Lord, I pray that they reveal themselves, yourself to them this morning. Through your spirit, move in this place, Lord. Lord I pray that um, for everybody else here, Lord, that we can just, man, we can just, we need that daily reset. We need to be the men and women you call us to be. I pray that we, this Christmas season and next year and throughout, Lord, we continue to put you first in our life, and uh, Lord, bring us always back. We know you don't go anywhere. Sometimes we like to stray a little bit, but you don't go anywhere, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you'll just uh, burden us with folks that we need to share the gospel with. I pray you burden us with it. I pray we can't sleep at night because of it. I pray, and I know, Lord, let us all understand that we just in our hearts that it's not us. It's not in us to go and say the right things. It's you. We just got to be obedient. And so, Lord, I lift all this up to you. I just give you praise and honor. 